In the midst of the church, he opened his mouth, and the Lord filled him with the spirit of wisdom and understanding, and clothed him in a robe of glory. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. The he that that antiphon refers to is the saint for today, St Athanasius. He was the Bishop of Alexandria in Egypt in the 4th century, and that was a time of great challenge for the Church. It had just as it were come out of hiding. The Emperor Constantine allowed Christianity to be practised publicly, and it seems that at the same time a huge number of heresies started to emerge as the church tried to define exactly what and how it believed. And Saint Athanasius was right in the midst of all of those crises. He is honoured by us today as someone who proposed and taught the faith of the church that we still have, especially regarding who Jesus was. Now I don't want to go into too much details of heresy and theology here, but the heresy that Athanasius had to deal with was something called Arianism. And what Arianism basically said was that Jesus was not God, he was created by God. Whereas the faith of the church, and indeed the faith that we profess, is that Jesus was God, truly made man. Now, it might seem a very obscure argument to us, but this is important. If Jesus is just a man, how can his death and resurrection affect the whole world? Because many people have died, many good men and women have gone to their deaths. But because Jesus is God made man, that makes the whole thing different. It gives it a cosmic reality. It gives the moments of the Easter mystery something which can touch every age, every person, every place. And this was so important to the church and to Saint Athanasius that he proclaimed this despite personal threat. When he was Archbishop of Alexandria, he was actually sent into exile five times for holding on to this faith in all of the debates and arguments of that time. Of course, Athanasius was proved to be right. And we give thanks today for his firmness, for his dedication to proclaiming the mystery of Jesus Christ. As we prepare to celebrate Mass in his memory and on our Easter journey, we ask for the gift of God's forgiveness for our sins. Lord Jesus, you have revealed yourself as the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. You have poured out on your people the spirit of truth. Christ, have mercy. You are the good shepherd, leading us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who raised up the Bishop St Athanasius as an outstanding champion of your son's divinity, mercifully grant that, rejoicing in his teaching and his protection, we may never cease to grow in knowledge and love of you. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The churches throughout Judea, Galilee and Samaria were now left in peace, building themselves up, living in the fear of the Lord, and filled with the consolation of the Holy Spirit. Peter visited one place after another, and eventually came to the saints living down in Lydda. There he found a man called Aeneas, a paralytic who had been bedridden for eight years. Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ cures you. Get up and fold up your sleeping mat. Aeneas got up immediately. Everybody who lived in Lydda and Sharon saw him, and they were all converted to the Lord. At Jaffa, there was a woman disciple called Tabitha, or Dorcas in Greek, who never tired of doing good or giving in charity. But the time came when she got ill and died, and they washed her and laid her out in a room upstairs. Lydda 
is not far from Jaffa. So when the disciples heard that Peter was there, they sent two men with an urgent message for him, come and visit us as soon as possible. Peter went back with them straight away, and on his arrival, they took him to the upstairs room, where all the widows stood round him in tears, showing him tunics and other clothes Dorcas had made when she was still with them. Peter sent them all out of the room and knelt down and prayed. Then he turned to the woman and said, Tabitha, stand up. She opened her eyes, looked at Peter and sat up. Peter helped her to her feet. Then he called in the saints and widows and showed them she was alive. The whole of Jaffa heard about it and many believed in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How can I repay the Lord for his goodness to me? How can I repay the Lord for his goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the Lord's name. How can I repay the Lord for his goodness to me? My vows to the Lord I will fulfil before all his people. O oh, precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. How can I repay the Lord for his goodness to me? Your servant, Lord, your servant am I. You have loosened my bonds. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make. I will call on the Lord's name. How can I repay the Lord for his goodness to me? Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. We know that Christ is truly risen from the dead. Have mercy on us, triumphant King. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After hearing his doctrine about the bread of life, many of the followers of Jesus said, this is intolerable language. How could anyone accept it? Jesus was aware that his followers were complaining about it and said, does this upset you? What if you should see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh has nothing to offer. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the outset those who did not believe and who it was that would betray him. He went on, This is why I told you that no one could come to me unless the Father allows him. After this, many of his disciples left him and stopped going with him. Then Jesus said to the twelve, What about you? Do you want to go away too? Simon Peter answered, Lord, who shall we go to? You have the message of eternal life, and we believe. We know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I find that one of the most powerful and remarkable moments in the Gospel. Chapter 6 of St John's Gospel, as we've been talking about, starts with the feeding of the 5,000 and then sees Jesus go on to tell the crowds that he is the bread of life and they must eat his flesh and drink his blood in order to have life. Now, the movement of that chapter I find the most powerful. We start with a crowd of 5,000. We start with a crowd of people who are flocking to Jesus. But at the end... It's almost this sense that they all disappear. They can't cope with his teaching. They like the miracle. They like all the, the spectacle when Jesus works miracles. But his teaching, mm, that's a bit harder. And so they all fade away. They stop going with him. And more than that, that last paragraph of the Gospel I find wonderful. Jesus turns to the twelve, his closest companions, and he gives them the option of leaving as well. What about you? Do you want to go away too? In a sense, you almost get that feeling that Jesus, who began this chapter with a crowd of more than 5,000 people, all desperate to be near him, at the end of it, he will be content to be alone. 
if people cannot accept his teaching. Now that's not just stubbornness, that's all about the truth that has come from above, the truth that his father has sent him with. And his job is to proclaim that. It's not to be popular, it's not to gather the crowds, it's not to be a celebrity, it is to proclaim a truth. And Jesus wants people to accept that truth, but he's not going to force it on them. They have to choose to believe. And he is willing to lose all of those followers rather than trick them or entertain them or force them into being his disciples. I think that's so important for us. We live in a time when we often talk about the decline in numbers coming to church. Many of our parishioners will remember years gone by when churches were full, when there were queues for confession, when all sorts of things went on that don't happen nowadays in 2020. That's when I remember this gospel. It's not about numbers. It's not about popularity. It's not about celebrity. It's about the truth of the gospel. It's about truly belonging to Jesus. So let us pray, therefore, that even in this time of lockdown, when we are perhaps being challenged in many of our traditional views of church and how we pray and how we worship, let us pray that we may be closer and closer to Jesus, truly in our hearts, so that we may be his followers always. And like the early church, we may be left in peace, we may build ourselves up, we may live in fear of the Lord and be filled with the consolation of the Holy Spirit. Let's think of our prayers for Mass today. And first, let us pray for all of us, our friends, our families, our fellow parishioners, but remembering especially perhaps the elderly, those who have been, as it were, locked in their homes for the longest period of time and may be experiencing fear and frustration. Let us pray that their closeness to Jesus may sustain and support them always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us offer a prayer for all bishops and priests and deacons, theologians and teachers. On this feast of St Athanasius, we pray that they, like he, may be true to the truth of the Gospel and always proclaim Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for a moment in silence, let each of us think of our own prayers and intentions. Loving Father, hear us and grant the gifts of grace to your people so that proclaiming Jesus, true God and true man, we may be led into a deeper relationship with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. 
Look, O Lord, upon the offerings we present to you in commemoration of Saint Athanasius, and may witnessing to your truth bring salvation to those who profess, as he did, an unblemished faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, an integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and proclaim your, profess your resurrection, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. No one can lay a foundation other than the one that is there, namely Jesus Christ. Alleluia. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, Almighty God, that the true divinity of your only begotten Son, which we firmly profess with Saint Athanasius, may, through this sacrament, ever give us life and protection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Regina Cedi, letare, alleluia. Quia, quem meru isti portare, alleluia. Resurrexit, sicut dixit, alleluia. Ora pro nobis Deum. Alleluia. <laughs>